Yeah, listen, it's a, an opportunity to, to get where we've, we've wanted to get, to be honest. Um, you know, when we first come in, you know, a few months ago, um, I think we set, really, set the lads a couple of up a, a tasks, really, and uh, the first one was to make sure we're playing in the in the last playoff game on the 31st of May and take it as far as we can. Obviously, there's the setting part is now we want to fulfil that, but um, yeah, it's, I think the exciting part, from my point of view, is that Again, I don't know if we could have envisaged running out in front of a, a sold-out Ibrox. That's going to be terrific. Um, but yeah, of course, it's a big game. Do you feel you have a kill-off? Two, sorry. No, no, no. I wouldn't. I, listen, we always want to be positive at home, but I think no, that'd be totally disrespectful to, to Motherwell and their players. They've got a good, solid group. They'll be doing everything they can, just like we will be. Um, but no, not at all. We can't. We can't go into that uh, into the game in that manner. What we can go in is in a really positive form and you know the lads are a lot more refreshed we've hardly done anything since the Hibs game and I knew going into the Hibs games there were a lot of them almost running empty now it's as if they've had a little break and uh, they're ready to go again so which is pleasing and we in the media perhaps sometimes guilty of over romanticizing the links between managers and clubs past links how much have you spoken or sorry thought about the, the modern world link um I think if I'm honest um I'm a I think people know me I'm quite a loyal person and I had you know, three and a half, nearly four years. Um, brilliant time at Motherwell. But my time, my thoughts will come after the game on Sunday. That's the only time I'll start thinking about the outcome and the aftermath. Um, you know, I'm fully focused on doing the job that I came here to try to do. Um, and that'll be the case. But listen, there's no denying, you know, that the 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 time that we spent at Motherwell with the players and the staff and the club, you know, were, were fantastic, successful times. Probably the success they've had in the, in the history at times. Um, but you know, in football you move on. But that um, I still have a, I'll always, you know, have a soft spot for Motherwell. But Rangers is my club, and you know we want to get promoted. Does that link give you an advantage? Do you think heading into this? Uh, I, I don't think so, really. Um, they'll probably know all my little set pieces that I used to do and things like that. So the players, but nah, naturally know them well, and you know. The, there's a lot of lads who, who serve the club and I've served the club fantastically well and I've got huge respect for them as people and as players and that'll never change. Um, but uh, no, no. I th I, and I, I think you know everyone's sort of, well, not everybody, majority of people are the same range of favourites. I think that's down to the fact that the record, and I'm more aware than anyone, the record that Motherwell have got going to Ibrox. You know, I mean, the first game I had there, we could beat 6-0 and it was absolutely horrendous. Um, we actually went up to Aberdeen and choosing one two one, and that turned us round. That's got me got me going. But we've had some poor results, uh, you know, when I was manager at Motherwell at, at Rangers, and you know they're well aware of that. Um, but that, all that will count for nothing once the whistle's blown. Stuart, when you look at the year you've had, this time last year finishing second with yeah. Motherwell, last couple of seconds he scored the goal, to now being in charge of Rangers against Motherwell in the playoff final, can you sum that up? No, it's incredible. I mean, a lot of people said, if I'm honest. And I, and I knew it was the case. I think I'd built a couple of teams. Um, and to, to get the 70 points that they did last season, Motherwell, and, and to win 20-odd games and to win it how they did, or get second, should I say, was an absolute credit to the to the players and you know everyone connected. Um, a lot of people said I should have gone at that time, but I, I wanted to have a go at a cup, if I'm honest. And I, I said that, and then we get beaten by uh, at penalty kicks against Hamilton. And I never once envisaged that Motherwell would be anywhere near the bottom. I've got to be honest about that. The reason I left the club was after fighting for a European place, or fighting to be second, really, we finished best of the rest three times. Um, with the start we had, we had a lot of injuries to begin with. Um, you know, things went, went against us. And I could only see us uh, fighting for a, a sixth spot. You know, Hamilton had started so well, Inverness had gone well. You know, obviously Celtic were up there, Aberdeen were up there. And it, it was going to be a, a challenge for six. And I just didn't think I had that in me anymore, having, because I'd been fighting for second and third. And I, I just, you know, I, I just felt, you know, let somebody else come in and, and be refreshed and have, and have a go at trying to get six. I didn't think for one second they'd be where they were. And then obviously then the, the new owner came in and put money into the club. Um, they managed to buy a player, something, you know, I'd never managed to do when we were there. And obviously brought people like McDonald and Pearson in. And uh, um, so I was really surprised where, where they ended up finishing. And some people say at the time you took the Rangers job, it was maybe the wrong thing to get it, but the way things have gone, you're in the final a chance at promotion. Is this absolutely the right thing to have? Well, you know, nobody could have seen how, how things would, you know, we've still got two big games to go, we know that. Um, 
and especially after my first two games here, two draws against the bottom two sides, you know, and, and players openly admitting, you know, senior players, it's the lowest they've ever been with confidence and morale. Um, so, you know, there'd be never a, a bad time to take this job, you know, to be manager of Rangers Football Club, 14th manager, I think, in its history. It's never a bad time to, to, to take this job. But, um, you know, we, we, we knew it was going to be a huge challenge. But thankfully, um, with a little bit of tweaking and that's all, it's been all down to the players. They've responded. You know they they've stood up, and now you, know, you can hear them in the dressing room speaking openly. The, the the buzz they're getting back from the fans. The fans have stood by the club and always will do. But there was a stage, obviously, they were against the players. The players understood that because the players weren't performing. Um, but now, hand in hand, the players have started standing up to play. Every big game we've had this season, we've stood up. The players have stood up um, and done the job, and uh, that's been because they're backing. And I always say, when you've got players and fans in unison. You've got a great chance. How much confidence can you take from the Hibs game in terms of almost having a, a blueprint for these two legs? You know, win comfortably in the, a decent scoreline in the first leg and then making it difficult in the, the second leg? Yeah, um, listen, I, I, we know we, we, we certainly going forward and being creative and everything at Easter Road, we weren't that. But what we were, we were resolute, we were determined, we were dogged, we were together. And um, you've got to find a way to get through. It's about where we're winning and, we're, and, and, and getting forward which we did. Um, I certainly would hope we would have more of the ball tomorrow night um, and hopefully we'll be we'll create more opportunities. Um, but yeah, the players, have, they're a different bunch now, you know, and that's what happens with confidence and, and results. And uh, I don't think they can wait to get out there in front of a full house. You talked about the fans. I mean, Ibrox hasn't been a fortress this season. I mean, what is it the fans need to do to truly inspire the side? Well, I, I think it's been a fortress of late, if I'm honest. I think we, we beat Hibs, we beat Hearts, um, and we come back from two down against Falkirk. We, we got through against Queen of the South. I think it, it, it's a togetherness, um, and I think the players need a hand sometimes in the crowd when it, it's a bit edgy and tense. And likewise, when it's quite the players need to go and do something. We did that again. I can't always revert back to the Hearts game. You know, the players were outstanding for the first half. We got out of 10 men. And it was the fans that carried the players through. And likewise, at Easter Road on uh, on Saturday or Sunday there, whenever we played, um, you know, they started well. They, you could hear their crowd. But for the last, I would say, from second half onwards, all you could hear, even though there were only 1,500, was Rangers supporters. And that carried the lads on as well. Do you feel it's an intimidating place that it once was? It can be, and I'm sure it will be come Thursday night. Uh, you know, the atmosphere against, uh, parts of it against Hibs in the playoff were fantastic, against Hearts in the in the league game. Uh, I'm, I'm just, so, I'll be, uh, when you're a, a player, <clears throat> what you want to do, obviously you want to make it as a professional, but you want to play at the top level. And playing at the top level, you play in front of the biggest attendances. And it's no different being a coach and a manager. So for me to walk out there tomorrow night with a full house is beyond my wildest dreams. You know, certainly when I came to the club, you know, we were, we're hoping we could do this, hoping we could do that. We've done nothing. We know that 100% we've achieved nothing apart from taking it to the last two games. Um, but what we will have is see a, 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 you know, a full Ibrox and that's something um, is a fantastic sight. You said, you said that you wouldn't focus on the outcome until mm. after the game on Sunday, but do you expect, mm. how do you expect Nicky to deal with the situation, the fact that he's going to be looking at the same problem, some of the other complications of that? Yeah, well, I, I think it might be too much for him. I might just leave him out of the squad completely. That would save him, wouldn't it? But uh, Ozzy will be fine. I'm sure Josh will be fine. They're both good, both, both good lads. I bought them both to Motherwell. Um, I believe Josh is going to re-sign there for a couple of years and he's, he's, he's done really well. But they're both, obviously, parents have been led, led them well. They're, they're, they're spot-on professionals. Um, I don't think it'll uh, affect them in any way. They've just got to get on with it, both of them. And it's, it's tough, but... That's football. You spoke about the, the Ibrox factor and the difference that it can make, but uh, on Saturday there against Hibs, you only had a small travelling support months later, you would have a, again a small travelling support for the game on Sunday. Have you got any concerns about that, or is it not a game about that? I, I've, I've no concerns. I'm, I'm disappointed, naturally. Uh, because I know how many Rangers fans are there, if it'll be 1,500 or whatever, they'll make themselves heard as they did at Easter Road. Um, we'll get great backing. I think, from a p pure manager point of view, the least number of away fans in your ground is better, you know. And that's that. But pure, that's me purely managing. Mm -hmm. From a, a bigger perspective, um, I think it was disappointing to see a lot of empty seats at Easter Road. That's right, and it'll be really disappointing to see it for a park. I think over the piece, I know how much big crowds mean to any club, but certainly to Motherwell as well. We used to bank on between five and six thousand 
coming through the turnstiles twice a season, which would give us two hundred or give Motherwell two hundred and fifty grand, which probably would pay for me four or five players for the year. Um, and you know they've always turned up Rangers and Celtic supporters as, as they do at all all the way grounds. <clears throat> um, so it's, I don't know the ins and outs and what reasons are behind it. I, I'm, I, I feel for the the Rangers supporters who, who won't be allowed to go to the game or get to the game. Uh, it'll look you know empty, but um, and likewise with the you know the Motherwell supporters, I think it will have a thousand there. You know they'll try to make themselves heard, but. Uh, you know that's that's the decisions that's been made. Um, it's it's not great, I don't think, but um, that's that's it. You see, when you try to seal the game and you're leaving half stands half empty, I mean, when there's a demand for those tickets to be to be bought, is that the best that we should put in? Um, no, listen, it's that's that's how it is. Um, you know, I, I don't know if it could have been sorted out in any other way, but uh, you know, I, I think originally. You know, it was. I remember. I think one of the staff saying to me, "Oh, we should be okay for tickets at Fir Park because we we're going to get a full stand." And obviously, now now we're not. So um, that's my biggest headache. You know, is to try to get tickets. But uh, you know, so it is what it is, and we, we've got to get on with it. But I'm sure, and I, I, I've seen Alan Alan Burrows quoted in um, in a paper saying, you know, he would like the rules looked at for the coming years about percentages or whatever it may be, so that this doesn't happen again. And uh, but I take your point. When it's a game, it, I mean, this is going to be the last game. I think I'm right in, in British football on Sunday. You know, the, the the cups and the leagues, and there will be, I'm sure, a big, big audience, and it, it will look poor on Scottish football when it goes pans in behind the ground and there's empty seats. But uh, you know, that's it. Well, as the home manager, what's more preferable for you, empty seats or a bigger away crowd? From a home manager, I, I'll tell you now. When when Aberdeen used to come down to Motherwell and they wanted and, and they got maybe I don't know 2,000 fans because they've got you know, good travelling support I wanted them as far away from the I wanted them up in the top tier you know that was me but we, you've got to then but there was a decision made that they can bring drums and flags and they can go in bottom tier because really clubs should be encouraging away supports to come to your football ground and that's you know at the end of the day as much as I wanted them out away and they're not allowed to sing and you know obviously it's it, that's how it is and uh, but I think we've got a bit look at Scottish football in a whole, and um, you know when the when the when the game needs supporters and needs the fans because they're the lifeblood of of the game naturally. Uh, it's a bit disappointing that a lot of people. I mean, Ibrox is sold out, you know. So you know that that's that's how that is. Obviously, you know, I don't think Fair Park will be well. There won't be anywhere near being sold out because um, you know the stand uh, and the ticket and allocation. You said you're surprised a bit more about being in the position at the end just now. You can point what exactly has gone wrong since you left? Well, not since I left. It, it was wrong when I was there. I've got to take part of the blame for that because um, I think what happened, you know, we lost, I think Sean Hutchins, even though we'd lost seven first-team players a year before um, and regulars they were, we, we managed to, to bring new players. But you can only do that so much. I think what really, we started in the European games and we were 2-0 up at home and, you know, we, we got pegged back two, two penalties. And then we get beat over there 3-2 and we came back and it was a bit of a blow. And we had a lot of injuries. The clubs have had probably unprecedented injuries this season. Um, Motherwell. And that took its toll. And then I remember we went up to Ross County 1-2-1. And we came back and, and played at uh, Celtic Park and drew one each. Scott Brown got a penalty kick when he had outside box. But hey ho, we were at uh, Celtic Park. But I remember that thinking that could have been a turning point. Uh, and then it, it was just after we, we played the first quarter games, if you like. And... We went to St Johnson and got beat a game they should have won. I, I just felt, it, it was a surprise to me, staff, Kenny and everyone. I just felt I didn't have the the um, sort of energy and the drive that I'd had before um, to try to get the club. I knew we wouldn't be able to get a European spot. Um, we were out of the League Cup and I just felt it was um, time. But I, I think they, they, we've normally got off to a good start, Motherwell, um, and the injuries impacted on them. Uh, so I, I, I think it's just been a case of that. And once you get in a... Um, a decline. It's hard to, to to get out of it. I thought at one stage they had done with it. I think they won three games on the trot, but uh, you know they found themselves in the eleventh. You've always said um, that the decision with regards to your future wouldn't be made um, with regards to whether or not you get the club up. But do you feel that the decision will really hinge on these two games? 
that's not for, for me to say if I'm honest as I say my my, uh, my aim wasn't or my uh, remit should I say wasn't when I come in was we have to, you have to get promotion it was to try to change things around and uh, change the I don't know the, the the atmosphere around the place and try to get the you know and, and when I look you know I think just having a, a full house tomorrow um, seeing the difference in the players now there's a bit of you know belief and confidence back in them uh, as I say my remit wasn't you get the job um, or you don't get the job should I say if we don't get promoted um, because I think we all remember where we were when we came in but also likewise it wasn't the job's yours if you do get promoted and that's that's been the case in the market. given that and sorry given that do you think you've done enough um, I might answer that on Sunday but uh, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it I, I think there's certain things I've been really pleased with um, with certainly with, the, with with a group of players but I think the the, the biggest um, plaudits have got to go to the players themselves and and the supporters in, in, in together I think they've both got together and uh, still got two games to do Would you like to make Scott Allen this morning? Is that something you'd like to see at the club next season if you're a manager? Again, Scott is contracted to Hibs for another year. You won't expect managers, if you're going to be here or not be here, talk about another player. I think what everyone would understand and see, certainly in the Cup semi-final um, and the way he's playing played, is a, is a talented player. Uh, again, we talk about an agent and a, a newspaper and all you need is a good agent to get a story in the newspaper and everyone's talking about it and that, that's happened. But he's certainly a good talent, um, but I'm sure Stubbs will want to keep him at Hibs. Sorry to jump back, but the, sorry, just to jump back. The Carol! <laughs> the way this has all worked out for you, Motherwell to Rangers, what it comes down to this is a ruthless business, isn't it? Listen, since I've been, I think, four year old, I'm still had a pair of football boots, not even football, anything I did, um, I've always wanted to win. My you know, kids will tell you that, I've left them in tears at times when I've been with Monopoly. Um, it's just, just how I am. Um, and, and just like I know Keith Larsley, Stevie Hamill, the lads there, Rammers, um, they'll be wanting to win. It's, it's, it's in me. I want to be a winner. Um, and as I said, life can be ruthless. Football's ruthless, but it's just how this has turned out. But, you know, it's Sunday and the aftermath, whatever happens is when it'll hit me. At the moment, I'm just totally focused on, on the two games. Team news is <clears throat> there is only Sebastian Faure. Um, who's got a long-term injury that is unavailable. So on that, and as I added, they've all had three days complete almost rest. Um, in fact, we only did skill games yesterday, and that I won't be doing them again. But um, so they've, they've done very little, and they're ready to go.